Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're talking about Adobe Dimensions. This software can be a little bit daunting, a little bit confusing when you first start out with it. But once you get a handle on some of the tools, it's pretty intuitive and easy to navigate. So this tutorial is meant to just help you navigate the software and get going. Let's jump into Adobe Dimensions. Once you've created a new project in Adobe Dimensions, you'll see a blank canvas. The empty space that you see before you is either referred to as the scene or the plane. On the furthest left side of the screen, you'll see the tools that are available to you. To the right of that, you'll see objects and materials that you can add to the scene. All the way to the right, you'll see the camera, the environment, and the different properties that you can change in both of those. To start, we'll click and drag this cube into the scene. And this button is the pre-render. It'll give you an idea of what your final project will look like, but if you turn it off, your computer will run much more smoothly. Whenever you have an object selected inside of Dimensions, you'll see this apparatus here that's called the Select Tool. It allows you to move objects within the space, change their size, and rotate them. The arrow portion of the select tool will allow you to move objects up and down, left and right, based on different axis points. So the green is the Y, the red is the X, and the blue is the Z. The circles will allow you to rotate an object any one of the three directions as well. Again, the same colors go with the same axis. So green Y, red for X, and blue the Z. The squares that are part of the select tool will allow you to change the size of any object in any one of those three directions as well. Finally, this dot in the middle will reset it to the plane and allow you to move it further or closer to your field of view. When you're using dimensions, you can add a bunch of different objects into the same scene. So you also need to be able to move yourself and your perspective. The way you do that is through these three tools. One is the orbit tool. This allows you to go all the way around an object that you have in a scene. It can be selected by moving your cursor over to the toolbar and selecting it, pressing one on your keyboard or pressing the right mouse button. The second tool is the pan tool. This allows you to move right, left, up, and down. It is selected by either moving over and selecting it with your cursor, pressing two, or holding the space bar and the right mouse key at the same time. The third tool is the dolly tool. It allows you to move closer or further away from an object and it is selected by pressing three or holding down shift space and the right key on your mouse. Once you have an object in there, you can add any kind of texture that you would want to it. So you could add glass, for instance, you could make it wax. And beyond that, there's a wide variety of materials that you could use instead. Without the pre-render selected, it won't look as good. So if you turn it on, you can get a better idea of what the reflections will be like with the material and how it will interact with the environment that you put it in. For example, when we add this water bottle on top of this object, Without the pre-render, it doesn't really look reflective at all, but once you put the pre-render on, you can see that the bottle is reflecting onto the surface. When you see all this noise, that's just in the pre-render stage. Once you render it at the end, all that noise won't be over the objects. Pressing V on the keyboard will allow you to get the tool that allows you to then move the object around again. Additionally, for this beginner run through of dimensions, I'll show you how to add a label to an object. If you find the object that you want to add a label to within the scene, 
there's a little kind of carrot right facing arrow all the way to the right. You click on that and then you'll be able to see what parts of that object you can edit. For this object, we get the option to change the lid, the bottle, and the safety ring. The safety ring is this little part underneath the lid. Underneath the actions tab, you can click this square and then you'll be able to add a label. So prior to making this tutorial, I made this water bottle label. If you just click that, it will apply it to the bottle. You can use any JPEG or PNG to do this. Once it's applied like this, it doesn't fit perfectly, so you gotta move it around a bit. There's two ways to apply a label in this instance for this object. One is a decal, which is like a sticker that you would put on a product, and one is a fill that will fill up the entire space of that object. If we leave it as a decal, you can change the X and the Y over here, but you'll notice this little link here, if you just click that, it makes it so you can change the Y and the X separately. If you keep it on, they'll change together so it has the same dimensions. Or if you click V again to bring back the select tool, you can just click on the label and that will allow you to freely move it and adjust the parameters. Pressing the squares by themselves will allow it to independently move. If you hold shift while pulling on any one of those squares, then it will move while maintaining the same aspect and dimensions. Once you're happy with how you have it, you can just click off into the plane and it will deselect the label. If you want it to be transparent, like most water bottles are, you can just add glass as the layer. Also further down, you could add water instead or ice, depending on your preference. Or you can just keep it white if that's what you like. Additionally, we could change the color of the cap if we wanted to by finding it within the scene and then pressing that arrow button that lets us adjust its parameters as well. Then let's take a look at the pre-render here. Once you have everything how you want it, you can click render. Then you can go over to the side and pick how you want it to be exported. So there's the option for a PSD file, which is a Photoshop file that will show up with a bunch of different layers, or you can export it as a PNG. Once you've decided where you want to save it, change the name, you can press render and this can take a little bit of time so we're going to let it render it out but I'll speed this up so you can see the final product. And keep in mind that it will render from the perspective that you left the camera at. So have the camera where you want it before you render it out. The render in this case took about two and a half minutes. Once that's done you get a PNG and this Photoshop file. The Photoshop file comes with all these other layers in case you want to make further adjustments and clean up your final mock-up. Thanks for your time. I hope this was helpful in getting started with Adobe Dimensions. If it helped you out, give it a like, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.